Hey. So, when I first learned I had a vestibular disability, which is your balance, when you lose your balance, and mine is 36% vestibular loss on my right side, um, I did research on it, and I really couldn't find a lot. I found clinical stuff, but I didn't find anything personal or practical about how to live with a disability like this which so I guess I guess that means maybe not a lot of people get it it seems to be more popular not popular but more prevalent among the elderly that seems to be a problem that elderly people get so if you look for balance loss for the elderly you'll see a lot of advice um, but I didn't know that at first so when I was looking for vestibular tips or whatever I didn't get any um, the best advice I got was from my vestibular physiotherapist. Uh, I highly suggest finding one <laughs> because he really, really gave me my life back. He taught me how to cope in a real and practical way. Um, but my sessions with him uh, were cut off, so I, uh, I had to figure the rest out on my own, and I've been sharing my journey on my blog, Cozy Living. And every time I learn something new or whatever, I pass it on, and today is one of those days. I'd like to talk about uh, buffets, because <laughs> it turns out if you have a vestibular disability, it might not be such a good idea, unless you have awesome support. I was very lucky. And uh, yeah, let's start with that. So it was our anniversary, and my father-in-law treated us to this very fancy buffet at the Old Mill. And uh, I didn't, didn't cross my mind until we got there that, oh my God, I have a cane. How am I gonna serve myself at the buffet? And it's not like some places that have like little plate holder things so you can set your plate down and do whatever. And this is like these fancy hushy poshy tables and you carry your plate and you're all pshaw. And uh, I can't do that. And then the other thing too was there were steps so I had to walk up the steps. It was dimly lit, which really fucked with me. So I, I was literally walking like an old lady, um, going up the steps. And then I put my hand to give myself support as I'm walking up the steps. And it was a sliding door, so it slid. And it, oh, it was just, you know. So anyway, and then it occurred to me, how the fuck am I gonna serve myself? So thank God my husband, he took me for a tour with a plate and you know I he held out the plate and I served myself what I wanted how much on my plate and then he walked me back to the table and then I sat down and ate as he went to get his stuff and it's just not pleasant so if you're thinking of a night out especially like a date or whatever avoid buffets that's that's my big tip um, oh it was good for him because apparently all the chicks, you know, they see him helping his wife and they're like, oh, he's so nice. So if you're the spouse on the other end of that, you'll get bonus points from strangers <laughs> for sure. My other tip is about purses. If you have a vestibular disability, you got to really watch with carrying stuff. So for example, if you carry weights, and they're equal, like equal weights on either side, it's actually easier to walk. I don't know why that is, but it is. So for example, if you have two shopping bags that are the same weight, you'll actually find you lose your balance less than you did whatever. But if you're so bad that you're now using a cane, like me, that's not even a, an option. So then you're stuck carrying one bag. I find without the cane, I can't carry shit. But if I have the cane in one hand, I can have another bag in another hand. What I can't have is something strapped. So I wear these hippie purses, they're Tibetan ones, and they go around the front and then they hang on one side. That's not happening anymore. Um, or I just find anything that's gonna weigh me down, you know, kind of messes with me. I have a heavy camera. I have neck problems, so I can't leave it dangling anyway. But when I do, like it's, it, you know, it's this thing is happening. So you can't have anything pulling on you in any one direction. Also, I'm now fat from being so inactive and apparently that doesn't help either. The neurosurgeon told me that if you can stay trim, um, weight can really throw you off and probably because I have so much weight on my ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no. I'm toppling everywhere. So those are three important things. I want to talk to you about the test. They can test your vestibular and you go to an ear, nose and throat guy. And uh, the test itself, to be honest, was really fun. I It was like, if you imagine the most psychedelic drug you could ever take, that's what this test will make you feel like. Most people apparently hate it, but if you dig a really trippy trip, you can love this test. The problem is the next day and for the next two weeks. For three days, I couldn't get out of bed. I was so sick. I couldn't even move one way or another without triggering massive vertigo. Um, and then it lasted for like two weeks of feeling like shit. So first of all, let's talk the test. You lie down on a table and they put all these little electrode thingies on you. So that doesn't hurt. That's just glued on, whatever. And then they shove water in your ear. So they put a huge stream of water and it doesn't hurt. Like it feels really, really trippy. And then all of a sudden, you feel as though you're lifting out of body and spinning. So the whole, it's like poltergeist fucking crazy shit spinning. And then they do it to the other ear and it happens all over again. And I don't even remember what direction you turn or anything. I just remember it was spinning and not spinning dizzy. You feel as though you have lifted out of your body or your body is elevated and spinning. And apparently they're measuring these hairs that are in your throat or something. And if you're fucked up, they're bent. Or if you're not, they're straight. I don't know. Something about the hairs and how they're standing in your throat. So um, it's all on a computer. And then on the computer, he can tell you almost instantly, you know, how fucked you are and, and whatever. And I remember when he said to me, dear, you've lost 36% of your vestibular on your right side. I thought, well... It's only on the one side and 36 percent's not that bad and i said that out loud and he said oh <laughs> so he pulled me into the corridor and he made me do the drunk test which i don't think i had done before so i you know where you walk with your toe to feet and holy fuck i took two steps and toppled over so and but here's the weird thing then he goes now i'm going to show you something so he makes me do it again except this time he, all he had was two fingers like this on my neck and I walk normal so someone should invent something because maybe you know there's something there so uh, it was I don't know that was a trip that test was a trip for sure so if you get that done at least you know where your issue is so I'm lopsided on the right hand side so I have my cane on the right hand side so I don't do this anymore every time I took a step I I tend to do that anyway now right I sway and I wobble and the cane kind of keeps me steady on that one side and it, it helps me avoid doing the wobblies. Just remember you cannot use a regular cane. You need a quad cane. A regular cane follows your center of gravity. So if your center of gravity is moving, the cane's going to move too. And by the time you realize you're tipping, it's too late, which is what used to happen to me. I was losing my center of gravity and not knowing. So then all of a sudden, bang, I'd hit the floor. So with the cane, that's not happening anymore. So I'm not falling as much anymore. So that's a good thing, except that I trip on my cane. So be careful when you're walking. Uh, the fact that I'm tripping on it though is telling me that I'm feeling more confident, that I'm not paying attention enough that I could trip. So at least it's showing me that I'm getting more confident walking. So that's awesome. So if I can just move out of a ghetto, then I can take a walk and that would be great. <laughs> so yeah. Vestibular disability sucks, and if you have it, I'm very sorry. Learn how to cope, or life really is shit. But if you can learn how to cope, and you have a really good sense of humor, you can avoid a lot of triggers. Instead of going to the buffet, go to a regular restaurant. Instead of going somewhere dark, go somewhere that's well lit. Uh, I went to Toronto Harborfront, you know, I used to love that place. It's my favorite place on the planet, but I can never go alone again. I've learned that lesson. I went with my husband on our anniversary and if he was not there, I would have been fucked. So, you know, you just have to learn how to be disciplined and how to honor your disability so that you can know how not to aggravate it. And the world is full of things to do. 
So if you can't do one thing, don't be stubborn about it. Just figure out something else that you can do that's not that bad. You know, my photography means everything to me, and I can't take a clear picture to save my life because I'm moving so much. Fucking tripod. Sit my ass down and take a picture. You know, you just figure it out, and if you can't do that thing, you do something else. So, um, yeah, it's survivable. It's survivable. Money stress, I don't think that's survivable, but this shit is survivable.